Sophie, how do you keep the ponies so clean? Is probably the number one question that I get asked. The answer? I don't. Everything is alright. A big warm welcome back to our channel it is lovely to have you back here with us firstly I just want to touch and say a massive thank you to each and every one of you that watched our previous vlog the Remy rehab vlog it was so lovely to read all your very kind comments and warm well wishes and welcoming us back so thank you very much and now today I thought I'd do something a little bit different as you can see I've got a number of different products lined up here products and some items as well now winter is tough and having horses in winter is pretty hard going there's no sugar coating the fact that winter can feel like a long hard slog for me one of the biggest woes is not having them looking pristine 24 7. now i know that might sound absolutely ridiculous to some but to me that's just how i like them we all have our version of equestrian reality some don't mind a little bit of mud, but I just cannot stand it. I think it's having the coloreds. If I had a nice brown horse, I'd probably just let it get filthy, but I don't. We've got the coloreds. They've got a lot of hair. They've got a lot of white, and I like to try and keep them that way. Might be like a bit of an optimist, but I try my best. Today, I am going to be sharing with you a few of my tips, tricks, and time-saving hacks to keep them looking as best as they possibly can throughout the winter months. Let's get into it. And yes, you did hear me right. This is as much for time saving as it is to keep them looking smart. I'm all about having things done as swiftly as possible. And if I can kind of prevent my horses from getting dirty. No, I don't have a magic wand. First thing we're gonna talk about is stains. Luckily, Remy has got a few for us to demonstrate. Now, it would be completely unrealistic for me to say that we can abolish stains you'll never have another stain again no that's not what this is about this is more about ways of a preventing them and b tackling them so they don't stick around no one wants a stain lingering right until summer my number one tip when it comes to stains is tackle them as soon as you possibly get one don't think oh okay they've got a little bit of poo on them that'll be fine no get rid of it as soon as possible obviously bathing your horse in the winter unless you're blessed i guess with you know running hot water we're not we've got running cold water and sometimes we don't even have that we literally have the worst water pressure at the farm but we make do it's all about making do with what you've got so what you want to invest in is a stain remover there are a couple that i use so i've got this one from safe care equine and this is a good one my number one though and the one that i always go back to is the shapley's easy out no rinse shampoo this is literally a bath in the bottle it's my holy grail and i'm running low so i have ordered a brand new bottle as you can see remy's got a nice patch here i'm not entirely sure what it actually is potentially it's dinner where mara's been grooming him and then he's also got a poo stain there. Do we have any on the other side? Normally that's the side he lies, no? Don't panic though. <laughs> Mara is here to help him out. She's got a lovely big poo stain there. Oh, down her legs as well. You are charming. Oh, one the other side as well. Thank you, Moomin. Now with this one, you actually don't need to use water. You can just spray it on and then simply wipe off. But I do find with tougher stains that water just kind of gives it that little extra just to eradicate it completely right even though it hurts so you give it a good shake don't spook your horse <laughs> and then you literally spray it on stand still good boy if they're not great with sprays you can just spray it onto a cloth and then rub it on like that right to the end. let me tell you because my eyes are
So what I tend to do is pop the stain remover on all the stains, leave it for a little bit, and then I'll come back and either wipe it off with just a clean cloth, or I'll use a bit of water and foam it up. <laughs> how easily that comes off with very little scrubbing. I will do as much as I can to avoid a stain in the first place. One thing I like to do is spray them liberally all the time with coat spray. My favourite is the Amiga Groom Perfect. I like this because you can use it on the saddle area. It doesn't make it slippy. So I would spray them before they go out in the field, before they go into bed for the night. Basically, all the time. Not all the time because, you know, I'd need a constant supply of spray, but we do go through an awful lot of these. But I will let them Again, if they are great with sprays, you can just pop it onto a cloth. But Mara, once she gets used to it, actually is fine. Like I say, I literally just go all over. Of course. Another fab use for coat spray is for once you finish riding, if they're a little bit sweaty, and again, you don't want to use cold water on them, don't want them to get a chill or anything like that. You can spray a little bit of this onto the sweat patches, let it kind of soak in, and then using like a rubber curry comb or something like a smart grooming super groomer, literally the sweat will glide off. So this tip might sound completely bizarre and probably a little irrelevant if you don't have a horse that likes to poo or poo in particular areas, but if you do, monitor where they pee and poo and put more bedding there accordingly. If you've got more bedding there, then there's less chance that when they're in here at night, they're gonna lie in it. So Remy pees in the middle here and over the back there, as you can see on the wall, that is his poo corner. So I would put a lot more straw there and a lot more straw here, hopefully eliminating any kind of stable stains. about making it like see what he's now engineering over his bed at night it's just enough so that I know that there is a lot more bedding here this is a lot more dense same over here and maybe say over here where I don't think I've ever seen him pull pee in his life that way he also know where all the clean bedding is and therefore saves you money because you can pull that stuff into there before you go and get any new stuff Obviously, if you have a horse that likes to go everywhere, then this is not going to work for you. Mara is the messiest of mares, so I can try as much as I want with this method, but it's not going to keep her clean. I'm also a massive fan of no rinse washes. It is a fab, quick and easy way to transform your horse from zero to hero.
find yourself with a little bit more time on your hands and I urge you to give hot clothing a go. I say a little bit more time on your hands, I don't know why, because it's a really simple process. Um, but all you need is oil. I've got a Shapley's oil here, but baby oil works. Some cloths and some hot, not boiling, warm water. Two buckets of that and you are good to go. There are several reasons why. I think you should give hot clothing a go if you haven't already. Number one, it keeps your horse looking fantastic. It gives the coat a really thorough clean and kind of picks up and lifts up the dirt that would otherwise be missed from just regular grooming with brushes. In my case, dirty brushes. I'm looking at my grooming kit right now and next job on the list is to give that a very good clean. What's the point of cleaning your horse or grooming your horse with dirty brushes? It keeps the skin moisturised and supple. In the winter, they spend a lot of time under rugs. So by putting the oil on the coat, it kind of puts the oil back into the skin and yeah, keeps it feeling nice and supple. And thirdly, extra bonding time with your pony. What more do you want? <laughs> I know mine loves having me hanging around him all the time. I have done a hot clothing video where I put this bad boy to the test and I go a little bit more into detail about the benefits of hot clothing, how we do it and why I think it's so fab. So it's not long. I will link it in the description below. So if you are intrigued by hot clothing or would like to know more, then please do give it a watch and let me know if you give hot clothing a try because I think it's fab. Oil is an investment. It's not an investment, it's not an expensive product, but get yourself some oil because it has more than one use. It's not just suitable for hot clothing. I use it as leg protection. Not boots, no, nothing like that. No, I use it as a barrier to protect their legs from all the mud, water, all the grime that comes with winter and turning your horses out in the winter. No, we don't keep them in 24 seven so they don't get any kind of dust or anything on them like that. They go out, they're horses, they live a lovely, happy life, but I coat their legs with oil to one, keep them looking clean. But number two, it's a fantastic way of preventing mud fever. Ours have never suffered with mud fever. And I would like to be bold and say, it's all down to oiling their legs. Again, like hot clothing, I barely see anyone oiling their legs. It's so underrated and one I think that everyone should give it a try. Once you do it, I don't think you'll look back. You can use a variety of different oils. Um, this is the Shapley's oil, the one that we use for all the hot clothing. This is more expensive, so I don't typically tend to use this on their legs in the winter. Um, I would save this for oiling their legs in the summer. You do have to be careful with oiling their legs in the summer. Obviously, the sun, oil, not the greatest combo. In the winter, you don't have to worry about that. But yeah, that's more of a summer product. Pig oil and sulfur. That is probably the most affordable and the most common, commonly chosen oil to oil their legs. The one that I use the most is this one. And this is Neem Wonder Oil from, I never know how to say the name, but it's Equax, Equax, whatever. Uh, so Neem is a brilliant product. It's a more natural alternative to using the pig oil and sulfur. It's a lot more kinder to their skin. You do have to be careful when using Neem on pregnant mares. It's not advisable, as in you shouldn't be using it on mares that are pregnant. Um, I'm gonna use it on a gelding though, so he's definitely not pregnant. But yeah, this is just brilliant stuff. It's also great for things like mites and keeping any kind of nasty bugs at bay. I use it on their tails. If their tails get a little bit dry, same with their mane. Oil is such a versatile product. You can literally use it on everything. Anything that's dry, I put oil on. If I want their coats to be shiny for the show ring, I put oil on. So it is a fantastic product and I cannot stress enough about how much I think everyone should be oiling their horse's legs. Hello. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, you're being a very good boy for all these demos. Uh, oh, that is bright. The light today is just shocking. That's 
I'm not really that better. Hold on. Yeah, as I was saying, the light is shocking today. It started out as a really foggy, literally couldn't see hand in front of your face type of fog. And now it's that kind of hazy, trying to be blue sky kind of day. And it just oh, creates this horrible white. Kind of makes me look a little bit orange as well. Like I said, you can pop the oil in their tails. It works in exactly the same way as it does on their legs. It kind of repels any mud and discourages it from sticking to their tail. But if you don't want to put oil in their tail because it can get a little messy, then get yourself a tail bag and some hairbands. our horses out so as we've taken their coats away we obviously have to rug them up Remy's fully clipped it's actually fully clipped all year round but we'll save that story for another day so yeah in the winter as we've taken all his hair off we need to rug him up accordingly Remy wears a full neck rug there's a lot of debate about whether you should be keeping your horses in full neck rugs um, a lot in regards to losing their mane. Now Remy does actually have a bald patch of mane so probably not the best advocate for wearing a full neck rug. That was actually due to a naughty Shetland pony and he kind of took a massive clump out of it years ago and it's just never grown back. Oddly enough it grows in the winter but in the summer when it warms up again it falls out. I keep him in one of these in the winter. So this is a turnout hood. Well, it's not actually a turnout hood. It's just a headless hood that you can pop on underneath their full neck rugs. You can get the ones that are designed for turnout and he has worn those before, but for him, they are just too hot. He was just getting way too hot underneath it and I was constantly finding him rubbing. So if he's too hot, he's not gonna wear it and it's gonna come off. have it on it's super easy to put on as you would have seen um, it zips up and then velcro fastens over there and then underneath you've got a clip strap which goes through the loop here so that it doesn't slip I've never had it slip um, it doesn't slip back or anything like up here you don't find this halfway down their neck mm. Mm. Good boy. If you don't have a hood though, another hack that you can do to kind of achieve the same effect is essentially get a piece of this material. This is like lycra, anything kind of soft and shiny, and you can sew it into the lining of their neck rugs. Now I'm not that crafty, so I've never actually done that. And obviously the downside to that is you can't wash it. This, when it gets dirty, you can chuck it in the wash. Obviously you don't want loads of dirt and grime to build up here as that will damage the hair too. If your horse does get a mane rub or any kind of rub, if their reins have rubbed their neck um, when they've been clipped, if their rugs have rubbed their chest, then you need to get your hands on some hair rebuilder, I guess is what they're marketed as. These are my two favourite ones. We've got, this is like an original fave. Um, this is Megatech. Um, don't know what the brand's called, but essentially, well, what it does, it repairs, revitalises and strengthens mane, tails and hooves. Did you know you can put this on hooves? I didn't. I've never actually used it on hooves. Um, it's fab. It's a cream kind of form. Not sure why I've popped it out of my hands. Um, you can use it in your own hair as well. Cream and it smells. Oh my goodness, it smells amazing. 
so good. But yeah, you can leave it in. It's essentially a leave-in conditioner. My hair will smell like pina coladas now. Yeah, essentially it's a leave-in conditioner. So what I'd do is I'd pop some of that on, uh, rub it in, give it a good rub, and let it do its, its magic. The other one we love is Main Event by Well Gel. This is probably a lot easier to use because it comes in a spray bottle. So you would obviously spray it on the affected area, uh, rub it in again, and yeah, let it do its stuff. I try and tend to put this on in the mornings. So I'd put it on, on his mane, then I'd put his lycra hood on, and then I'd pop his turnout rug on. I kind of think it gives an extra barrier, maybe an extra layer of protection from any rubs from neck rugs and there you have it we have come to the end of this video hopefully you've enjoyed it give it a thumbs up if you have i know it was slightly different it wasn't just me bringing you along on our day it was a little bit more of a tutorial dare i call it that um <laughs> it wasn't knowledge just me spouting off some random bits of info that i've picked up on along the way um and things that make my life in the winter easier. I think if you can prevent them from getting as grubby as possible, saves on the grooming and therefore maximizes on the riding time and the time that you just spend with them, you know, fussing over them. Obviously, I'm not saying <laughs> this should be for everyone. Mara and Remy are both in work, which is why they kind of get pampered. Um, they're ridden horses, competition horses, hopefully one day, if we ever get back to shows. But no, I'm not suggesting you do this on every single horse. If you've got a horse that lives out in the field, then obviously this is not going to be the greatest of ideas because they need to build up the natural kind of oils in their coats to help protect them from the elements. Hardy obviously doesn't get all this pampering. He lives the life of Riley. Lovely, he's gonna have a wee in the background. <laughs> Great. Um, yeah, cheers for that hard. Um, no, like I said, this isn't a one rule kind of fits all. Obviously you have to tailor it to your individual horse. Hardy is a companion pony. So therefore he's pretty much left to his own devices. Speaking of Hardy, I asked for some video suggestions in the last vlog and lots of you wanted to see more of this guy. Now, that absolutely can be arranged. I've got a couple of ideas up my sleeve. Um, I think he's the coolest thing ever. He is literally the biggest character to have on the yard, aren't you? <sighs> and he's just a joy to be around. So I'm sure he would love to feature in his very own video, Remy's co-star takes the lead. As you can see, this is the reason why we do it all. We are battling with crazy amounts of mud and water this year. Great. You're allowed to get as mucky as you like, aren't you? Trouble. Hi. Nice. Good, eh? So, legs that haven't been oiled, looking delightful, versus over here, we'll show you a pair of legs that have. And he's walked through exactly the same amount of mud as Mara. Let's show you on Hardy as well, because obviously Mara's got hair, so it 
tends to stick to a bit more mud, doesn't it? Mud sticks to the hair. So Hardy's got short legs, short legs, <laughs> short hair on his legs. Let's come around the other side. And you can see how mucky, if you stand still, they are. Hard. There we go, mucky legs. Another video idea I had was a get to know us. I do questions and answers over on Instagram all the time, but I'm well aware that some of you that follow us on Instagram aren't on here and vice versa. Does that make sense? So I thought maybe assumptions, questions, something like that might be fun to do on here. You'd get to know a little bit more about me, more about the ponies. You can ask what you want to ask. Um, so if you do have any questions, do pop them down below or assumptions um you know be as random or as maybe don't be too brutal but yeah be ask away and i will answer them but all that is left to say is goodbye from me and grubby moo <laughs> and we will see you very soon hope you're having a good week bye what do we do to love what do we do to love when everything's said and done? What do we do to love?